Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at four clans produced by Doc's Playing Cards and designed by Native Tongue Studios. Now, Brad Gabbard, the artist behind Native Tongue Studios, has worked with Mike McClure over at Doc's Playing Cards on a couple of other decks, including the fantastic Tough Luck decks from a couple of years ago. Really great deck, one I recommend checking out. But for this one, they went back to feudal Japan. While it's the story of four fictional clans who may have existed during that time, uh, it still draws a lot of inspiration for the artwork and the weaponry that's uh, represented in here from actual warriors of the time. So think the time of samurais and warriors battling for control of Japan. I love a good thematic deck, so I was really excited for this one, and I'm a fan of Brad Gabbard's work. So really excited to check this one out, and let's get right into it. Well, the deck we're looking at here is the standard version of the deck, uh, and so it comes on a tuck case that's just a regular glossy finish tuck case, that standard tuck case you'll see from USPCC. Now, I will say as I go through this, there is also a limited version of the deck uh, that's available that offers some much needed foiling and slight embossing that gives it some real extra texture and depth. Uh, but the artwork on this one uh, features a series of red cords in the background. These are inspired by the Edo wrappings that you'd find on the handle of a traditional katana. Really cool design work and love the sort of minimal feel to it. Not too much else going on. You get the four clans emblem there. You can see the little four and then the Japanese symbol in the background uh, on a gold medallion in the middle. But everything else pretty much is that red wrapping front and back. On the side, you get representation of the four suits on this gold panel. Other side, same thing. Bottom has your ad copy for Native Tongue Docs Playing Cards. Also mentions these are made in the USA. This is from uh, USPCC. And the top has the name of the deck, Four Clans. So really cool artwork on this one. I do really very much like it better with the texturing and the foiling. I think you know it looks a little bit flat on the standard version of the deck, but still some cool thematic artwork. So you open up the inner flap, you get some Japanese characters here. Uh, it's a series of symbols that represent the seven virtues of Bushido, essentially the values that every samurai pledged to adhere to. And they are kind of going left to right here. You have Gi, integrity, Rei, respect, Yu, heroic courage, Meiyo, honor, Jin, compassion, Makoto, honor, honesty and sincerity, and Chu, duty and loyalty. It's a cool little addition there. And even this red line here carries a little bit of symbolism to it or a symbolic purpose. It's designed to look like the Hamon pattern that you'll find on a lot of Japanese blades. It's basically sort of reveals or differentiates between the areas of the blade that have been hardened for sharpness. So very cool extra little touch there with that red line. Smaller inner flaps just have the, the uh, logos here, native tongue on one side and Doc's playing cards on the other. And then nothing printed on the interior of the top. So that's the tech case. Fun look to it. Definitely like the limited version better, but still some cool, simple artwork on this one. All right, but now going to the cards themselves, and we'll start with the back design. So the back design features a two-way or a two -way design highlighted by a menacing pair of masks. These are called Somen. They were the masks that samurai would wear. They were usually made of like iron and leather, and they were served, they would serve both as like facial protection, but also as a bit of an intimidation factor. You can see those. Uh, really intimidating faces that are molded into each one of them. And then you have the glowing red eyes, a really cool little pop of color in the design. Uh, there's also lots of other details in the card back design, including the cross samurai, you get the little lotus flower there in the center, and those Japanese architectural elements. Japanese writing here on the side, by the way, this reads Bushido. And then you have Roman numerals for 76. Now, I'm not sure at all what the 76 refers to. I don't think it's actually related to the Four Clans deck at all, though. I think 76 is something that Doc's Playing Cards has included on all of their decks. And I don't think they've ever actually explained what that 76 means. Uh, but anyway, the last design element around the borders here, you get that kind of off-white that gives you that vintage feel to it. And then the little red elements here that are sort of border-breaking elements both serving as a little bit of an extra pop of color and giving you something interesting when you use this in fans. So cool back design, a lot going on, but I really like the aesthetic of it. All right, 
Now moving on to the Joker. So you get identical artwork on the pair of Jokers uh, and it features another one of those Soulman masks. This one, that devil's horns, and then features the viper wrapping its way around the mask, going through the mouth and around the horns, and then finishing with its mouth up there on top. Uh, it's a really cool look to it. And I think the snake is presumably a bit of a reference to Native Tongue Studios. Their logo appear, uh, includes a pair of snakes in it. Uh, but really cool style, definitely captures that sort of vintage Japanese feel. Uh, and then the background feels sort of inspired by a traditional Japanese screen. You can see those lines going all the way around. Uh, nice extra little touch there. And then you get the lotus flowers in the corner, a symbol of rebirth. Uh, down the side here, you get that Japanese writing. That's again, the seven virtues of Bushido listed. Same thing we saw on the tug case. But same artwork on the two jokers. You just get the red versus the black lotus flowers in the corner. So there's your two jokers. You also get a couple of other extra cards. You get a double backer, always a nice addition. And then a bit of a story card here, telling you a little bit about the four clans that are featured on the four different suits. As I mentioned before, these are fictional clans, not clans that actually existed, but definitely borrows some of the artwork and bits of detail throughout here from actual clans that existed in feudal Japan. All right, now on to the aces. So the ace of spades, definitely the power ace of the deck. And I love the chosen artwork on here. Definitely a very abstract feel of a spade pip, but it's made out of a classic samurai helmet, including that mask that we've seen a couple of other places. That big menacing mask and then the hood, that armored hood coming down, as well as the sort of intimidating horns almost or the spike coming out of the top. Really cool look to it. And then you get the red circle in the back, obviously the uh, Japan's known as the land of the rising sun. So the red sun in the background, kind of a, a great symbolic reference to, uh, to Japan as well. And then the pip in the index in the corner, definitely an interesting choice on this one. So you get a very stylized ace index here in the corner. Uh, a little bit hard to read, almost made to look like a Japanese character. So you get the eight in two corners and then the spade in the other two corners, which while kind of cool when you look at one card, definitely hurts a little bit of the functionality of the deck. You can see here as I fan through the four aces, because you can't see the, the, uh, the pip in the corner, it's kind of hard to tell which suit is which when you just fan it, like if you're using this for gameplay or something. But still a cool look to it just as a single card if you're a fan of decks for art. So the other three aces all feature simple, simpler artwork. The middle of that large border on the edge, you get the three larger pips here, classic red or classic black, as you'd find in a traditional deck, but each one definitely fully stylized and fully customized. So you get the lotus flower there in the center of the diamond pip, the fan inspired series of clubs, and then the heart pip here as well. So there's your aces, nicely done on those. Those same custom pips are carried through to the number cards as well. Definitely get much smaller pips in the center and you can see the floral pattern in the middle of the spade pip there. Uh, de you know, a lot of that's just because it's crunched in the middle of this large frame around the edges. So definitely get a little bit more of a cramped feel, especially as you get to some of the larger numbers, but still a nice look to the pips overall. And that custom border, I think really adds to the artwork on this. So nice, other than that issue with the index and the pip in the corner or the lack of pip in the corner, I think it's a, still a fairly easy to use deck. So depending on what you're using this for, still I think a fairly readable deck, nice, easy to distinguish between the different suits and everything, uh, and fairly easy to read numbers. Other than the ace, the other numbers are a lot easier to read. So there's your club pips, and then into the hearts. Now I'll say the one other thing I do wish is uh, that writing down the side, maybe taking it off on the number of cards. It feels a little bit excessive as you go through with all the cards, having those uh, seven virtues of Bushido written down the side. All right, and then we get to the courts. And the courts all feature some of that, some more of that really fantastic stylized artwork that we saw on the Jokers uh, and represent the characters of those four fictional clans that were dreamed up for the deck. So the spade showcase the Kirashido clan who ruled over Western, the Western territories of Japan, and they were all known as skilled archers. So three of the warriors depicted on the courts love the sort of shadowy black and white look, uh, the highlight, that pop of red with the sun in the background, 
and you can see all of them ready for battle, raising their swords or their bows. Uh, this clan, they were all uh, fearsome archers among their other weaponry skills. So on the queen here, you can see her with the bow in hand and the, uh, the arrows at her back. Now, there were female warriors at the time. They weren't actually called samurai. They were called Ona Buge Bugeisha uh, to distinguish them from the more masculine term of samurai. Uh, but that queen right here, my absolute favorite card in the deck. I love the huntress look on her face, uh, the headdress in the top, just everything about this one. This is a really cool card. So there's your spades. And then going into the diamonds, the diamonds were the Northern Matsuda clan. They were the peaceful neighbors of the Kirishido clan. And they were known for their heavy armor as well as their skill with swords. And so all of them you can see with that really bulky armor on and then the swords at their sides here or a nice peaceful look on the queen there as well. And then very cool look. I love this one, the mask on the King of Diamonds. It's a really cool one. All right, now turning to the clubs. These come from the Shunji clan of the East, one of the original clans and the nemesis of the Kirishido. And another one of my favorite quotes. The queens in this one, I think all look the best. And I love that this sort of angry look on the queen's face with the streaks of red across. Very, very cool. And then finally, we have the hearts who represent the Akikura clan of the South. They were a collection of small factions that were once thought to have mystical powers, but they were skilled with all manner of weapons as well. But really cool, I love the halberd here. That's a really unique weapon with that sweeping blade at the end. Or the uh, that hat on the uh, Queen of Hearts there, another really cool one. And then this one definitely looks like the uh, most menacing of the warriors with that red face paint or maybe that red mask over the top. Very, very cool. And there are your hearts. And that is the deck. So again, some fantastic artwork on this one. I think Brad did a great job with the artwork and really well thought out details. Even though it's a fictional clan, definitely worked a lot of details of Japanese culture into the artwork of the deck. As far as handling, these come from USPCC. Uh, if you felt a bicycle deck, you're familiar with the stock. Handles beautifully. And those red details definitely pop out when you use this in a fan. So great deck in terms of handling. No complaints on that front. Uh, overall uses of the deck, I'd have to say it's it kind of falls more as an art deck than anything. Certainly you could use this for uh, cardistry, I suppose. Definitely a lot going on for that. But it's a little bit too custom for magic. And in terms of gameplay, that little bit of a flaw with the indices in the corner and not having that pip in the corner, I think holds it back from being as functional of an interesting gameplay deck as it could have otherwise been. But otherwise, for an art deck, I think a lot of fun and a lot of detail that went into it. I think did really, really well with the deck overall. Anyway, that's it for now. That is the look at four clans from Doc's Playing Cards and Native Tongue Studios. Hope you enjoyed this look and make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and more unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see and I'll see you for the next one.